majority of cyber scams are transmitted via email accounts only. People will open an email either to discover a virus or to read ambiguous information across the system network. Cyber scams and frauds have disrupted the bank accounts through transmitting viruses and thieving private details. Many bank accounts of course have been disrupted with the help of viruses and malwares along with the misuse of personal information. On the other hand, cyber fraud deals with cyber identity theory, bogus uh, fundraisers and system viruses. These are some of the forms of cyber scams. Now, let's look at about frauds. The term fraud is defined as the intentional desire of unfair or illegitimate gain or denying a victim of an authorized law. Frauds may be further classified by the type of victims involved. The most general groups of victims encountered are the funders and the contributors, the creditors, the industries, banks or other economic organizations, central or home administration, scam by manipulating economic advertisers. So, frauds may also be classified by the method or activity used by imposter. These include but not restricted to advance payment scams, fake statements, system hacking of data or assets, conflict of awareness, bribery and counterfeiting, internet frauds, misuse of properties and finally money laundering and many more. Fraud is basically a wrong attitude. We will see fraud as a civil wrong. The court system considers fraud as a civil wrong that is known as a tort. Every jurisdiction has a particular description of fraud. However, commonly it is assumed to be the deliberate misrepresentation of significant information. For a civil wrong to be assumed, specific characteristics should be in position. They are verifying the state of intelligence of both the executor and the victim at the prime time. Verifying the fraud happened with the unambiguous and persuasive facts. Fraud as a criminal offence. Particular types of frauds are categorized as illegal offences. Majority if the executor is involved in thievery and are fake deceptions. Similar to civil wrongs, particular characteristics should be in position for fraud to come under this type of illegal offence. They are deliberate fraud by fake action with the aim for encouraging the victim to part with funds or assets. Next, the confidence in the fraud by the victim who really parts with the funds or assets under the fake actions. Next, the executor maintaining or planning to maintain the funds or assets in question. This basically helps us to understand why the fraud is happening. The fraud triangle refers to the model for explaining the factors that cause someone to commit an industrial fraud. It consists of three elements which jointly lead to a fraudulent behavior. They are the economic demands, opportunity, and rationalization. Economic demands. Most people need some form of force for committing a fraudulent activity. For example, it may be a fund issue, it may be a gambling debt or alcohol or drug addiction, overwhelming remedial payments etc. So, there is an economic demand here. Second one is opportunity. 
an opportunity for committing the actions should be present in case of faking normally a momentary condition arises where there is a possibility to commit the activity without a high opportunity of being jumped next comes rationalization it is the attitude of an individual who is about to commit an illegal activity by clearly managing what one is about to do some may assume that they are just going to make use of the stolen commodities or that they require the fund more than the largest industry they are thieving from fraud tree during the past decades the property misuse plan has become known as fraud tree for its several members the tree trunk consists of two main property categories such as money second one record and all other properties some of the prohibited offensive and illegal contents can be as follows they are cyber bullying identity theft online trading issues spam unauthorized access or hacking using malware or ddos or dos attacks cyber criminals carry out their activities with any one of the more dishonest techniques which we have explained above to gain monetary benefits or sometimes even momentary pleasures some of the precautionary measures that can be taken are when an attempt is made to log on to a non https site look for or the fake addresses that switch letters or that contain some typos emails that contain lots of spelling and grammar mistakes should raise alarm bells if email is received asking for personal information report it emails that are not relevant should be viewed very suspiciously always be doubtful and beware of emails asking for money expenses fees and other purposes if there are indications that it is a scam cease communications immediately and report the messages I would like to conclude this discussion with some of the recent cyber attacks. We will see some insights onto the unlawful activities carried out in cyberspace recently. First of all, the WannaCry ransomware. WannaCry, a ransomware attack, had a widespread impact during May two thousand seventeen. This is basically a malware that took. roots in digital devices of national health services sector at united kingdom as usual ransomware attacks targeted and infected computers hard drive contents were encrypted and huge ransack bitcoin payment was demanded to decrypt it one crime arrives as an uninvited guest in the target system in the form of a dropper which is a self contained program that extracts the other application components embedded within next comes the not petia ransomware it's a ransomware attack which was spread via phishing spam in the year 2016 it just targeted an encryption of the master boot record of infected machines it was actually difficult for the users to get access to their files services and data due to this attack next comes ethereum it's a high profile attack considering the sheer amount of money involved ether is a bitcoin style cryptocurrency huge ransom of amount For example, seven point four million dollars neither was stolen from the Ethereum app platform in few minutes in July. Closely knitted was the next attack. In just weeks later, came another thirty-two million dollar heist. This attack raised questions about the security of the blockchain-based currencies. We saw about some of the important 
blockchain threats in the previous module. Next is Equifax. Hearing about the cyber attack targeted to exploit the US website application with an attempt to gain access to certain files in July 2017 was a big alarming threat. The threat of personal information for nearly about 150 million people being at stake was an alarming um, threat to the users. The subsequent follow from Equifax, the massive credit rating agency, puzzled the people further when the site Equifix set up where people could see if their information had been compromised. Actually, it seemed as a pre-mediated design to sell Equifax services. This module basically discussed about different classification of cyber crimes and it's really important to understand the motive and the type of cyber crimes to handle it. We have also discussed on cyber scams and frauds, fraud as a civil wrong and criminal offense and various prohibited offenses along with the recent cyber attack or cyber crime incidents that took most of our attention. With much more interesting details, we'll meet in the next module. Thank you. Thank you.